Hey, welcome back and thanks again for joining us. Uh, we've received a lot of comments and feedback about our alternator and the voltage regulator series of videos we did a while back. And if you haven't seen those, we'll go ahead and link them up above and you can go back and check them out. One of the biggest things about uh, using these uh, drop-in lithium batteries like the Battleborns that we got going on are the uh, is the internal battery management system. And what that does is if, if voltage gets too high or voltage gets too low, the BMS automatically cuts it off as a safety feature uh, to keep from blowing up the battery packs. Unfortunately, when you're running an alternator, if the alternator has the batteries fully charged and there's some sort of voltage spike or somebody does something stupid like turn a one, two, all switch in the off position while the engine's running, uh, you can get a big load dump. And what that does is it causes the BMS to shut off and the alternator from uh, the internal diodes and the alternator fry up. You know, that's a four to $500 project. Um, doing a little research and recommendation of one of our viewers uh, who sent me a comment. Uh, he suggested the uh, Sterling uh, alternator protection device. It's basically a sacrificial set of diodes inside that anywhere there's a transient voltage or a voltage spike, this thing will uh, absorb the shock before it kills the diodes inside the alternator. A real simple hookup. It's two wires here, positive, negative. It goes straight just to the positive and negative post on the alternator. Secondary to that, you can add a little alarm and a, you know, a buzzer if you want to, to let you know that yes, your alternator has fried your sacrificial device. Thing's about 70 bucks. It's a little on the spendy side, but it's a lot cheaper than a brand new alternator or a new set of diodes. Let's get started. Sterling recommends a five amp fuse and they recommend you to size your wire uh, to 10 amps uh, for total current carrying capacity. You could probably get by with number 18 wire. I have some scraps of number 16 that I'm gonna use. And additionally, they say mounted as close to the alternator as possible. This thing's IP68 uh, waterproof. These connections, I'm gonna put some grease on. I'm gonna use heat shrink terminals on the back of the uh, alternator where it hooks up. And that way if there's, you blow a hose or a water pump starts leaking, then that way uh, it won't corrode and cause problems with this thing shorting out inside. I'm going to stick it right down here on the engine bed. Anytime I pull the engine cover, a quick look. If that red LED is on, on the device, that lets you know that you hit a volt, you're a running above, I think it's like 16 and a half volts. Oh, by the way, while I'm doing this, I did disconnect the negative term or the positive terminal inside the battery compartment. This wire here feeds the alternator off of this bus fuse there connected to the battery. I disconnected the hot and the positive and negative at the uh, alternator because you've got to install these two additional wires. So what I got here is some corrosion inhibitor and I've used this before on other things like the, uh, the smart plug terminal that we installed. It's just a little extra insurance to make sure that this doesn't start turning green or corroding or anything like that. This thing has little knockout windows on the side. I've already knocked one out. That's where I'm going to run my wires. They say it's best to install the, the small wires to the APD. Install those behind the big fat cable that goes from the battery, positives and negatives. Reason for this is that if in a situation where the alternator vibrates the cable loose, if one of the cables pops loose, then you've got an open circuit voltage that just is going to dump and fry the alternator. This way, uh, if the cable falls off, the APD will still be hooked up behind that bolt and it will potentially protect your alternator. I'm just tightening up this. This is the negative side of the alternator. This is the black wire that goes to the bus bar. Well, I got the yellow wire hooked up to the, the negative side, just like the diagram right there. And now I'm going to connect positive wire and another heat shrink ring terminal which will go to the positive lug on the alternator. And just hit it with a heat gun. Don't use a cigarette lighter or something on like this. You'll catch the plastic on fire and you'll end up ruining the terminal and it'll be worthless. So there's like a couple of different wires that hook up to the back of this alternator for voltage sensing so that the MC614 
charge controller knows how much voltage is coming out and how much voltage is in the battery bank. There you go. Tighten down the cap. Good to go. When I originally programmed the voltage regulator, I set it for a tenth of a volt below the BMS setting, which I think is 14.6 or something like that. So, so what does that do? That just means the, all, the voltage regulator shuts off before the BMS could possibly fry the whole system. So, so then what does this do? This takes care of voltage spikes or any, dump, any open circuit uh, detected between B, ne B negative, I think, which is on the, or B positive, I'm sorry, uh, which is the cable that goes to the battery. This basically is just a sacrificial uh, deal that will burn up instead of the more expensive diodes in the alternator. So that's about that. I want to say, yeah, a big thanks. Uh, we get a lot of comments now, and we've been getting a lot of emails through our website. And you can always hit me at richardsvramalon.com. I mean, if it's really involved, I'll give you my cell phone number. You can give me a call, and we can chat it out. I like bouncing ideas off of other people and talking about boats, man. Yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the comments. Thanks for the thumbs up. Uh, we really appreciate it. You can always see us on uh, Instagram uh, at SV underscore ramble on. Occasionally we dribble over into Facebook as well. Check out our website too, svrambleon.com.